Okay, so for 4.3 part 2, we're going to be talking about the properties of logarithms. And remember, the properties of logarithms coincide to the same properties of exponents. So when you had like x squared times x cubed, how did you do that? You added the exponents together to get 5, right? So it's the same thing here. If you're taking the logarithm and the argument is multiplied together, you can separate by adding the separate logarithms, okay? So if you have an expression with the same um, base, right? If you have an expression with the same base, then you can just add the individual exponents together. Um, and so then the same thing with the quotient. If you had x to the sixth over x to the fourth, that would be x squared because you took the top one exponent minus the bottom exponent. So that's all this is saying, is saying the top exponent minus the bottom exponent, right? X being on the top, Y being on the bottom. Then notice that if you have a power raised to a power, you remember that one, right? X squared raised to the power three. Then you would have to multiply the powers together to get six. So if you have an exponent raised to another exponent, it's the same as just multiplying the two exponents together. So that old x, that exponent up there times the log x, which is also an exponent. Um, and then the logarithmic of one, we know that any base raised to the zero power is one. So log of one is always gonna be zero. You can use your calculator, it'll tell you it's zero. And then the same thing here, if your base um, and the expression are the same, that meant that the uh, exponent had to have been one. Okay, so we're going to use that information to um, figure out these problems. So it says, use the properties of logarithms to rewrite each expression. Assume all the variables represent positive real numbers. And they have to, right? Because um, you can't have negatives in your argument and you can't have negatives in the base. So they're telling you, don't be a smart aleck. We know that those are variables but you're going to assume that all those variables are positive, okay? Because you will have some people be like, well, this doesn't make any sense because what if this guy's negative? And what if that guy's negative? You told me they couldn't be negative. So now we're telling you ahead of time, they are not negative. <laughs> that way you can finish the problem, okay? And you can compute and work out what we're wanting you to work out. So remember, if you're multiplying two arguments together, you can separate the arguments But because it was multiplying, that means you're going to be adding the two logs together, okay? And then here for this one, you can separate it. You can do log base six of 12, always have to do the top first, and then log base six of five. But because it's division, you should be subtracting those exponents. And then here, this one you actually have a pre-step which means you have to write this as nine to the power one third. And then we know that when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you just multiply. So you can bring that exponent one third to the front. Here, we have to rewrite this one as well. This one would be r raised to the three fifths. Okay, exponent is the numerator, radical is always the denominator. Notice that in here, the exponent is just an invisible one, which is why that one was one third. And then this exponent will come to the front just like it did in part C. Now let's look at the next one. So here we have, we can separate it into log base B of the top minus log base B of the bottom, but then we have to separate all the variables. So since these are all multiplied, I can separate them by doing log base r plus log base b of s squared plus log base b of t minus, and I can do the same thing for this one and separate that one, log base b of u cubed plus, because it's multiplied, log base b of v to the fifth. 
The only thing you have to remember is that all of this expression should be behind a minus sign. So everything you get should be behind a minus sign. So I would put the, parent, the brackets. When I expand this front part, I used brackets. And when I expand the back part, I used the brackets, okay? Now we're gonna take any exponents that we have and move them to the front of those particular terms. So I get log base b of r plus two log base b of s plus log base b of t minus um, three log base b of u plus five log base b of v. And then the only thing left to do is to distribute this minus. So what do I end up with here? I'm running out of room, but I'll end up with log base b of r plus two log base b of s plus log base b of t minus three log base b of u minus five log base b of v. And this is the final answer with everything all expanded out, okay? Now F, I'm gonna have to come over here because I wanna make sure that I have enough room for F. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna write that as an exponent. So I'm gonna have this whole thing, R cubed S squared over T to the fourth, and I'm gonna have it raised to the power one over M. Oops, you can't see that. So that radical part that mth radical became 1 over m. Now I have two ways I can do it. I can bring the 1m to the front and then start separating it, but then that means that that 1, m, 1 over m is going to have to get distributed to everything later anyway. So what I'd rather do is I'd rather distribute it in here first. So if I do 3 times 1 over m, I'm going to get 3 over m. If I do s squared times one over m, I get two over m. And if I do the fourth power times one over m, I'm gonna get four over m. And so then now I'm gonna separate, I get log base a of the top, then minus log base a of the bottom. This has a product in it, so it needs to be separated. So log base A of R to the 3M plus log base S to the 3M and then bring down the last term, log base A to the T to the 4M. And then the last step is always to bring your exponents down to the front. So then we get 3 to the over m log a of r plus 3, well that should be 2, plus 2 over m log base a of s minus 4 over m log base a of t. So make sure you're paying attention to all the little details and you don't forget to write your base like I just did. You make sure that you're recopying the correct numbers and so on and so forth. It's very easy to make a tiny little error and then the whole thing is counted wrong, okay? And you're not done until your argument is just one solitary thing with no exponent, okay? Now, they're gonna have us go in the reverse order, okay? So, Notice what we did first. What we did first was we separated any products or quotients and then we brought the exponents down, okay? Um, and so for here, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna take the exponents up first and then start writing the products and the uh, quotients. So here I don't have any coefficients in front, so I don't need to bring up any exponents. I am going to start combining these things from left to right. So with a minus sign, that means I'm going to have log base 4 of the first guy. Minus means divided by the second guy. 
Then now in order to combine these two, I get log base four, but now I'm gonna have x over y times z because of the plus sign. And that can be simplified into x, z over y. Now for part B, I do have numbers in the front. So those need to go up to as exponents first. So log base B of R to the fourth minus log base B of S to the fifth. And then now I can convert the subtraction into the fraction. So R to the fourth over S to the fifth. And as long as you have just one log, you're done, okay? Now here, I do have some coefficients there. So I've got this one third here and this two thirds here, and that one doesn't have a number to move up. So log base A of X to the one third plus log base A Y to the two thirds minus log base A of X Y. Then now we're gonna go from left to right so that's a plus sign, which means these two guys are going to actually get multiplied together. And then now to put the subtraction together, that means they're going to get divided. So the first one is the top, and then the one behind the minus sign is going to be the bottom. So you're only um, doing the division with the arguments, okay? So you're taking this argument as a numerator and this argument as the denominator. Can that be simplified? It definitely can. So if I were to do this, I would get log base A, and then if I take one third minus one, put in the calculator, I get X to the negative two thirds. And if I do two thirds minus one exponent, I get Y to the negative one third. But if I write these as fractions, it means one over X to the power two thirds times one over Y to the one third, which is equivalent to um, log base A of one over X to the two thirds Y to the one third. And then one step further, final step, is to convert it into radicals. So one over the cube root of x squared and the cube root of y to the power of one, okay? And so depending on how much it wants you to simplify this, um, or it could actually even be written as one over the cube root of x squared y. Um, Depending on how far it wants you to simplify it, that's how far you'll have to go. Um, normally, you can stop as long as the exponents are not negative, and you can probably combine it into one and then stop. You don't have to keep going, but pay attention to the directions in my math lab because it will tell you exactly. It'll probably tell you it doesn't want fraction exponents, and so you have no choice. You've got to simplify it further. When you're taking the test, it's going to be a multiple choice. So you'll have to be able to identify, hey, this one is equivalent to that one. Um, and then show your steps on how you're making it equivalent to that one, okay? So that you can get the maximum credit on a problem like that one. Um, I don't know that it's that complicated on the test, but we'll see when we start working on the review. Okay, that is it of this section. And so um, that's actually the end of week two. So later we'll be going into week three, which just as a summary, um, week three will be just working on sections 4.4 and 4.5, and then um, working on the test three review, and then the final exam review. So there's really only gonna be four different um, pages where you're gonna have videos to watch. Um, and then you're gonna have basically four assignments, two homework assignments, a test three review, which is a homework assignment, and then the final exam review, which isn't an assignment. It's just in a document that you're gonna get, um, and then you work it out on your own and see the videos later to see if you got the right idea. It's basically just a study guide. It's not really an assignment. 
So yes, there are 48 problems on it, but this is not going to be an assignment that needs to be completed, okay? Um, but that's it for this unit, so toodles.